Six Days War was a, a defining moment in the history of Israel. You know, since the War of Independence, 19 years, there was no major challenge to the existence of Israel. Here it comes once again. Israel turns to the United States for support. When the moment of truth came, the American commitment uh, evaporated. And we realized once again that we have uh, to rely only on ourselves. It was not easy. There was a lot of hesitation and anxiety in the political leadership. Britain and France also refuse help. And again, Israel fights alone. But in 12 hours, they completely destroy the Egyptian, Jordanian, and Syrian air forces. And within six days, wipe out their armies. Within a week, from a position where they seemed to be faced with extinction as a state and with destruction as human beings, they succeeded in transforming their situation into one where they were victorious over all their neighbors and occupied a very large amount of the territory of their neighbors. Israel now has defense in depth. She creates buffer zones between herself and her enemies. She takes the West Bank from Jordan, the Gaza Strip and the Sinai from Egypt, and the Golan Heights from Syria, and quadruples in size. With shifting borders, a million more Palestinians come under Israeli military rule. Trying to bring about peace, the UN passes a resolution, which is to become the basis of all future negotiations. Resolution 242 states that land now occupied by Israel will be exchanged for peace if the Arabs recognize Israel's existence. But Israel won't withdraw, and most Arab nations refuse to recognize the Jewish state. The massive and humiliating Arab defeat in 1967 shocked Palestinians. It destroyed the certainty of their world, which was the hope that Arab governments and Arab leaders, charismatic people like Abdel Nasser of Egypt, were going to lead them like Saladin to victory and return to Jerusalem. So they looked to themselves for, their own, for, the, for the first time, and this changed their self-image from being victims and refugees waiting for handouts from the international community to people who had guns and fought for themselves and stood up basically and made their voices heard. Twenty years after the birth of Israel, a new Arab leader is keen to take on the fight. Yasser Arafat becomes chairman of the Palestine Liberation Organization. It's declared aim to liberate Palestine by force. From bases in neighboring Arab states, the Palestinians plan a campaign of terror against Israel. They don't have fighter planes or tanks, but they have landmines and guns. They carry out numerous attacks across the border. One of the things that really drove Palestinian militancy in the late 1960s and early 1970s was a sense of grievance that the most important thing, more important possibly than actually liberating physically bits of territory from Israeli occupation, was to shock the world into seeing the Palestinians, into recognizing that they existed, into recognizing that an injustice had happened to them. Radicals within the PLO resort to publicity-grabbing international terrorism. In 1970, they hijack three planes, divert them to Jordan, and blow them up. And this was just the start. You are watching.